or monolithic .NET stack. They each have their advantages and disadvantages. So some things to know. Um, single thread and it's a So if you're doing anything that's CPU bound, you're probably going to have a bad time. Just the framework doesn't lend itself to anything in that context so well. Um, if you're working with legacy tech, I mean, the grand scheme of things, Node is still relatively new. So there's a bunch of technology from you know, even 10 years ago where there's just not the implementations in Node, but there might be implementations in other frameworks which you know, have more of that history. Um, you have existing components, such as what our case was, which you need to try and sort of push in and use. You don't want to re-implement things when there's already something which is nice and working. Um, or you or the team you're working with will have a lot of knowledge in .NET. Like if you're going, oh yeah, cool, we want to try a node in this thing, but all of your experience is in .NET. may not be the easiest project to deliver. Um, also in situations where there might be a superior implementation elsewhere. So some of the stuff which um, people using Edge go into is things like lots of work with MSSQL. And some do in-memory data processing and then pushing that out to an MSSQL database. Um, it's, it's not best to do that straight within Node. It's not overly efficient. Uh, on the flip side, reasons you might not want to use uh, C Sharp. Um, it's .NET. Uh, that's, that's a bit of a cop out though. It's yeah. easy life to for reserves. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's not isomorphic. So if, if you're trying to set up with one stack which is going to run, yeah, particularly in the web context, same code on the back end, same code on the front end. Um, if you're doing desktop apps, yeah, sure, you'll be able to do some C sharp there. But if you're trying to do stuff in browser, um, you don't have you know, until WASM comes out properly. You don't really have the ability to C sharp on the front end. Um, there's a much smaller package and open source, uh, sorry, package ecosystem and open source community. Um, just there doesn't seem to be that same sort of mind share with people just going, hey, we created this thing, go use it, go nuts. Um, and similar thing, you might have components which are already know which you want to use. And also less familiarity. So the same thing of, you know, if you are coming from somewhere which is mainly a node house, you might not want to have to be implementing all the stuff in C sharp. You just don't have the you know, skills, the want. Um, or you might just find node a better language to work in. So in a normal scenario, um, if you're wanting to do this non-monolithic stack, so piecing together some different pieces of technology, you, you know, spin up component in Node, which is going to be spinning up a V8 VM. Um, then you'll spin up some components in .NET. So that's going to be spinning up either um, the CLR runtime or Mono, depending on the platform you're on. And then between them, you'll stick some sort of IPC. So whether it's like a gRPC or a um, JSON RPC or any, any sort of API you want to pop in there. Um, yeah, some form of way to get those processes <laughs> communicating. So there's some issues with that. Um, it adds a bunch of latency, uh, complexity as well. And then you've got issues with ops and you know, security of that. Now you have these different processes to talk to you, which means other things can talk to them. So let's introduce uh, Edge. So within Edge, we still spin up Node. That spins up the V8 runtime inside there. We still spin up the .NET CLR or Mono. But instead of having this RPC mechanism between them, Edge that's between them inside, inside that same process boundary. So it's basically taking that role of where you normally have IPC, they're doing all the communication between those different runtimes, but doing it inside that one process boundary. So you get you know, some um, efficiency gains from that, um, and it's just simpler to work with. Okay, so our first bit of code. Um, this is using Edge. So if we step through what's actually happened here, you start node, starts up the V8 runtime. So we now have that running. Um, we got there, we require edge, that's going to spin up the CLI runtime inside that node process. This edge.func, that is wrapping some uh, C sharp code. What's happening here, this is just some, yeah, just some text being passed in there. That's going to be compiled on the fly into an in-memory assembly. Um, and then we can call that like normal JavaScript function, which will then marshal it from V8 over to CLR, process that, and send us back a response. Nice and simple, still with me? Cool. So, to show you what the line is uh, it running all on RunKit. We can see our output down here. Um, let's just make sure this is definitely work. Rerun that. To make a call across, we 
getting environment info out of .NET as well as the platform we're running on, spinning up that. Um, so there are a couple of things when you are using it. You can't just call into any .NET code. Uh, you have to stick to this uh, func object, pass object, delegate pattern. Uh, what this does is it normalizes CLR into just a simple async pattern. Um, so with this, remember, no single thread. This lets you have the sort of non-blocking operations so that you can call out um, into any of the .NET processes into a thread pool there, and then Edge will reconcile those uh, different uh, concurrency models and then give you your information back into that node um, eventually. Um, so most of the time if you've got some C-sharp code, you're not going to have it in this sort of delegate model. What we end up doing is just creating a um, essentially a static class of um, simple little functions which just bindings into everything else that's happened. So nice and simple to adapt things over. Um, okay, so there's a couple of ways of setting this up. Um, just string literal, like we saw before, just pass it in, it'll compile it, you set it to go. Pardon me. Um, if you are on ES5 or below, you can pass it in uh, as multi line um, <coughs> inside a comment. Uh, it will actually pass that out via regex, compile it, do it all nicely. If you're on ES6, um, you can just use template literals. <coughs> so it keeps it nice and simple, you can still have these multi line, nice formatted C code inside the sort of C sharp. Um, if you've got something more involved, you can have entire classes in there. So on our ones that will go there. On our ones, it's all just this simple inline lambda. Can't really do too much complexity there, but once you start diving into things, you might want something a little more complex, so you can, you can call that into any sort of C sharp code that you want. Um, so a few things here is if you are doing the whole class setup, um, the class needs to be called setup, and the function you call it needs to be called invoke. That's it. And you just need to keep that um, fun object, task object, delegate format. That's going to get to be a bit of a pain in the ass if you've got all this you know, C sharp code inside all your JavaScript code. It's you know, like working with any language where you can try to combine multiple languages into one file, it's just not pretty. Um, so but it's just a string. So you can import that any way you want. Any way you want to get into there, have the C sharp code separately. That'll still compile it on the fly into that in memory assembly, and you can run. Okay, so everything so far being compiled on the fly. Um, that's not going to be the best for every scenario. Um, so you can have pre compiled uh, libraries, call straight into them. Um, same thing, it'll default to invoke for method name and um, or a startup for the class, so you can emit the type name, emit the method name, just call that to a DLL. Um, you can also bring in references, so if you need to have other DLLs there, it's part of it. Um, if you're using those defaults, though, you can also just pass in the DLL default, so it's, it's nice and simple. Um, cool. So we've got the bindings in there. Now to invoke it, we have two ways. Um, we can just call it asynchronously. So no callback pattern. Call it as though it was just a native internal function. Nice and simple, and call back with your error with the result. Um, otherwise, if you do have synchronous C-sharp code, you can call it this way as well. Um, if it doesn't complete synchronously, you'll get an exception. Um, so you can handle all that. But most of the time, you're going to be calling it as though it was the internal node function. Um, quickly, marshalling. Basically, everything you can serialize to JSON. You can pass between the, the two runtimes. Um, so it comes across the, you know, most of the data types are as you'd expect, so nice and simple. Um, I think the only weird ones are uh, objects come across as dynamics, so you can still dot into them the same way as if you're working in JSON in JavaScript. Um, arrays come over as a array of objects, so again, just drilling down through that whole thing and buffers come over to a wide array. That's it. Everything else just seems to make sense. Um, one thing though is everything is passed by value. So because there's these two separate VMs running, there's separate garbage, garbage collection processes happening in them, so you don't have anything coming across and sharing that state once it's there. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned here, though, is you can also pass functions across those boundaries. So you can pass a node function into C sharp and execute that at a later time. That's the, where it breaks the um, pass by value, so it's, and vice versa. Okay, so it's a bunch of code, how do we pull into it? Um, <laughs> I want to show you guys some of the magic that this lets you do. 
that you actually achieve. Um, this is where it gets super, super interesting. Um, so if you want multi throttling from a node, call into it. Um, when you come into your function, you're still going to be on the V8 thread. As soon as you drop into those async tasks, you're going to scale the thread full. You do whatever the hell you want. So you're not blocking um, the node event thread at that point. You can do whatever you want, call back to it when you're done, everyone's happy. Um, this opens you up to some interesting things as well. You can call to any native libraries. So your Windows all in your node app. There you go, dump. Uh, any of the native platform libraries you can call it. Um, there's a lot of things which are seeking inbound tasks. You want to do some image conversion. No problems. Done. Simple. Um, if you want to do... What else can we do? Oh, yeah. Um, you can also go the other way. So this is symmetric. You can embed no code in C Sharp. Um, there's a new get package. That's for Edge. You'll find it there. So if you're more comfortable working in C Sharp and you're bringing no components, do it. Go nuts. Um, cool. I've been talking about C Sharp, but this is um, interprocess communication CLR. So any language that compiles down to CLR, this will work with. F Sharp, if you want to get your functional neck beard on. <laughs> um, Python, there's a CLR implementation for that. Um, if you really want DB, <laughs> PowerShell, um, and there's a list of implementations as well. So I know that um, the guy that built it was looking for someone to try and get the COBOL implementation up and going. Um, so if anyone wants to help out with that, <laughs> probably get in touch with him. Um, for those working in TypeScript, um, this I'm used with, I mean, I, I can't stand not having type safety, so everything to do is, is in TypeScript. Um, so if you search on npm for HTS, you find a little patch with together, it's just a simple little wrapper over it. Here's a couple of things, um, type bindings, so actually know what, what you're sending to it, what's coming back. Uh, promises for the async work, um, and just a nice sort of light API if you're trying to bind onto more composable um, binding targets, so things in the same DLL, uh, things that are using the same references, that sort of thing. Um, cool. That's it for me. Um, my Twitter handle is that crazy one with all the underscores, so just hit me up for us, simple little industries, there's <laughs> links up there, it's easier than typing it. Um, I also work for ACA projects, so we're Brisbane based, uh, also Brisbane and Sydney based, um, you know, Probably small startup here at the moment, and we just build a uh, platform for control, yeah, control platform for the Internet of Things. But any questions? Yeah. Uh, is there a .NET core story in .NET? Uh, yeah. So it is. I'm trying to remember if there's. Um, if you're using .NET Core, I think there's a little compile flag you need to switch on when it builds, and then it'll target that instead. Um, but if you check their docs, they've got it. So you gave an example where the The, uh, so we're back on. Uh, look, this one here. Yeah. So um, H looks at that JavaScript file, uses a regex to match uh, what's in that function, and then compiles that. <coughs> so H has its own C# -sharp compiler built in for it. That's what's actually looking at that original file. So I guess on top of that, the question is, when you create a function in JavaScript, do you also get the comments as part of that function? Is that how that's working under the hood? Um, yeah, well, it's, it'll just take whatever that is and pass it into a C-sharp compile. So whatever's in there, it has to be obviously valid C-sharp, or you're going to have a bad time. But. I'm guessing the question around the first one of the comments is, how does it get that comment? How, how does it get this? Yeah, so that's because the function itself, if you go function two string, it two strings the entire function body. Uh, which means that if you would, for example, go like var x equals that function, then go fun x, it would not work. Actually, so no, it would totally work. But if you call it within another function, it wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah. Well, remember this. This isn't um, JavaScript. It's looking at that. That's a C sharp compile. So if you run that uh, in Node directly, yeah. JavaScript sees that comment. It uh, it gets that function passed into it. It will take that function, go dot to string. Yep. You get that, and then it will compile that. Yep. The question I guess is that people asking me is not how to compile that, because how do you get the text inside a yeah, compiler? Yeah, that, that was my question. And it's, it's by going function dot two string. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I had a slide for. 